This is Tyler Lewis here with Phenon Hoops. On today's show, we're honored to have one of the best high school coaches in North Carolina, Josh Cooley. Thanks for being with us today. Yeah, I appreciate it, Tyler. Thank you. No problem. So getting into it right now, we're obviously we're in a crazy world, crazy environment. Um, but just take us through kind of this year with the mask and then take us through your whole coach, high school coaching and how long you've been in it. Ooh, yeah, man. So this year with the mask is obviously different. Uh, it's new. We never experienced anything like it, but you know, there's no excuses in the process. We just, we adjust accordingly. We've been kind of adjusting on the fly since July and, you know, our guys, you know, I love them for it. They've been super flexible. Our parents have been great. They've been incredibly flexible as well. We haven't received, you know, any pushback as it relates to what we're required to do. I think everybody's just so happy for the kids to be on the floor uh, practicing and playing. So um, I'm sure they're more happy to play than practice, but uh, you know, so we haven't had anything. It's been a blessing. Um, from a coaching perspective, man, this is year nine and they go by fast. It's incredible. So I've been at United Faith for two, five. This is five at United Faith. Um, I did two years at Carmel Christian and then two years at Garinger High School here in Charlotte. And that was um, that was amazing. So this is this is this is the ninth year talking to my wife a little bit about it and told her it just doesn't seem that way. It feels like we still scrambling in August, just like we were way back nine years ago. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, time flies when you're having fun, coach. It does, man. It does. It does. I was never, never planning to do nine, but it looks like I'm doing nine plus. Some. Oh yeah. You got, you got more years in you coach. Yeah. 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 I was talking to, um, <laughs> coach Hatchett and coach Johnson, Ron Johnson and Rosto Hatchett. And uh, they, they said that. They were like, what year is this? And I was like, man, you know, it's year nine. And we're supposed to be doing, you know, how you set goals for yourself. You're supposed to be doing, you know, X, Y, and Z. I always, those are like my vent guys. So if I need to talk about something, I call them. They're probably sick of me. But either way, I was telling them, oh, we need to do this and that. And they were looking at me like, hey, man, shut up. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, though. Um, year nine, you thought you could be somewhere else. But it's kind of cool how God kind of opens, closes doors. In, in your life and that's you right in. man you're in the right spot where you need to be right now yeah and I love it I love it I love United Faith I love it. it's it's a God sin it's a great place my kids go to school there like it's it's fantastic we love it as a family so it's good and they've been really good to us so you know that never hurts no that's awesome for sure and obviously a great great basketball program and you do you do a fantastic job with your team um yeah, thank you. no problem so what is your why? Like, why do you coach? Yeah, man. So I coach because uh, of our guys. So I will tell our guys and I tell everyone else that we're a player's first program, right? So wins and losses are great for us. Like, they're fantastic. But, like, seeing our dudes graduate, seeing our dudes go to college, some of them get opportunity to play. Uh, we've been blessed and fortunate to have quite a bit, have an opportunity to play. Uh, that is the why for me. Um, I played for, so I was, I was, I'm from a small town called Fremont, North Carolina. So if you know about it, you know about it. I'm between Greensboro, I'm, I'm sorry, Goldsboro and Wilson. Yep. Small town, no, like enjoy, just loved the game. Um, had a lot of friends that played. Uh, but I had like an AAU coach that just kind of found me, like out of Raleigh, I played at Garner Road and you know, he just kind of found me and pulled me up and ended up going to Word of God. But those two guys in my life, I was raised, you know, like small town. You know what I mean? So you go to Raleigh and it's like, Jesus, we in Las Vegas. You know what yeah. I mean? So, <laughs> so, so those two guys, man, my my AAU coach, Tony Knox, uh, he was, he, I, I mean, he was the first man like in my life that had like, you know, poured into me outside of, you know, basketball coaching, thing like that. So for him to do that, his son that I grew up with, Tony, is my assistant. And I always joke, like, hey, TK, we call him TK. I'm like, TK, you know, like, you'll be good for life on staff, man. <laughs> like, you don't have to do anything else. Like, you're my guy. <laughs> so, uh, but he, he's, Tony took me in. Tony, like, he didn't need anything. He never asked us for anything. It was just out of love. Um, and then I ended up at Word of God, like Kevin Washington, I promise he should be in some Hall of Fame somewhere. Um, he is my, so like he, same thing, man. He didn't know who I was, you know, and he brought me in. He loved us. He was hard on us. He held us accountable. 
but like it created this bond. Like I still talk to my high, my high school teammate was just up here, you know, at United Faith watching us practice probably about three weeks ago. You know, like it, we we have this incredible bond. I talked to uh, one guy who graduated a couple years before me. He was really good. We talk every single day. Like it's just the culture that he built, the family that he built, and he just welcomed us in. Um, and and he was a professional. So I think like he showed me what it meant, you know, in games, you're wearing a suit and you don't have to like, you know, curse and yell at your dudes to get your point across. You know, he, he was, I mean, he was tough. Like we ran and ran and ran some more, but like he was professional with it. Um, and, you know, as kids, you're kind of taking that stuff for granted when you're going through the steps, you kind of just, you know, this is just who coach is. But when you look back on it now, especially like when I'm coaching now, you realize like, man, like he was a great guy. You know, he was a fantastic dude. Never had, never did not have time for us. So if I needed to go sit in his office, it didn't matter what was going on. I went and sat in his office. Um, he still FaceTimes me. He still calls me. He still, you know, I, I joke with our teammates, like we still terrified of him. <laughs> when his name <laughs> comes across my, my call ID, like he, he you know, you kind of get that little sinking feeling in your stomach a little bit. Um, but man, they, that, that, those guys establishing me to love um, for helping, you know, other people. So I feel like, you know, they helped me. They never, even to this day, have they, neither one of them have ever asked me for anything. Both of, them, both of them, you know, care about my families. My AAU coach is, you know, he knows my kids. He comes to our games. Our high school coach, he was, he left and started coaching at Delaware State. But, you know, he would call, check on the boys, check on my wife, like, tell me about your wife. Like, you know, hazing me up on the phone. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he's the guy, but he lives in Virginia now. But I still talk to him. He still, when I got the AD job, he was the first guy to call me, like, helping me navigate through you know, what I'm getting ready, what I'm getting into, what I'll see, some people that, you know, I should talk to, all of that. He was an AD in the NCISA for years and years and super successful. So um, those dudes paved the way for me. And I feel like, you know, if we have kids and they want it and, you know, they're in that same situation. I'm in mean, Charlotte's a lot bigger place, right? But, you know, everybody's not already ready-made. And uh, for those dudes, you know, we hope that, we can provide some type of hope just like they did for us so, or for me at least. I no, that, that's awesome. And you truly need people like that in your life. Um, yeah, certainly. Your role models, people that's going to care for you all the time. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> you talked about your, you talked about your AD role a little bit. How, how do you kind of manage your AD role with your coaching role? Yeah. So it's hard, man. It's like, uh, it's always going to be a perfect storm. So at some point during the season, it's going to happen. Uh, you can't really get away from it, but, um, you know, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Like you get to see uh, other teams grow just like you get to see your team. I think when you're the basketball coach, you kind of like you have tunnel vision with your basketball program and man, we got to be really good. But now I get to see like my volleyball program, you know, we were way up here, went to a state championship and then you see it like ebb and flow, right? Like you see them graduate everybody and now they're trying to get back to, you know, where they were. You get to talk to coaches. And I would say, like, my best professional development has been uh, as an athletic director because, like, you know, you got to provide professional development for your coaches. At the same time, you know, you're learning and finding things, like, to give to them that work for you. Yeah. So uh, it's been good, man. We have a really good cross-country program. They won two and three state championships, like, individually and one or two as a team. Um so like just seeing our coaches and seeing them be as passionate about their sports as you know, I am about basketball and you know, it's, it's been a joy. It's been a great, great deal. For sure. Not, not everybody's going to share your same love for basketball and you're not going to share their same love for volleyball or football or cross country, but you know, there's people out there who do it and they do it the right way. There you go. And that's, you that's go, what man. makes it, That's what makes kind of your job special. You get to see everyone do what they love in the sport. That yeah. they love. And you respect it, you know, yeah. like, you respect it. I respect their love because I know I know what they're going through. Like when they tell me, ah, oh, they can't get, you know, in practice we're working, it's not translating to the game. I'm like, oh yeah, I've been there. <laughs> been there, been there, done that. Still going yeah, through. I know, I know. The process is still the same. So um, you talked about sort of like your love for like uh, even seeing other people grow in the process. When did I know you played 
Um, when was the first time you kind of fell in love with the game that you're like, man, this is really what I love doing? Man, I was young, man. So I loved winning. So like that was my thing. Like I I didn't like I love winning. I love you talk to like my kids I probably grew up with. Like I, I loved it. My high school, we were up here laughing the other day. Like we used to do stuff at Word of God, like even the most simple drills. Like we would, if you won, uh, it was you hear about until the next day of practice, you know. So I think I was early on. I enjoyed winning. I enjoyed winning in like the most simple things. And then when I figured out like you could win in basketball and I, we played like, you know, I'm from, we played outside, you know, like we played outside on the concrete, we played outside in the, in the cul-de-sac with dudes to roll, roll goals into. Uh, <laughs> and you had to win to survive. Like that was your thing. So if you didn't win, you get there at one o'clock, you be there until seven trying to get back on the floor, you know, so, or the why. Like, uh, man, some of the older guys, the Victor Youngs, I think BY's got a son at, at, uh, that's really, really good down at Greensboro Day. Yeah. But BY was a couple years older than I was. And like, we would go to the Y, and them dudes would just pound us. Like, you know, <laughs> if we go over to the sideline and wait, and then we get back on after about eight games, and they're like, oh, I'm tired. I'm getting ready to go home. <laughs> <laughs> so the only way you got to play good basketball is if you won. So, like I, I didn't I didn't grow up with like the skill set with the like, you know, like whatever we had to figure it out. And you just had to figure out something to be good at to get on the floor and then you had to be great at it to win. And then, you know, just just compete pretty much. And uh, I kind of, you know, you kind of get your skill set stuff later on in life. But I think uh, the passion for winning was like it, it just heralded over everything for me. Definitely, definitely. And. Obviously, how did playing kind of help you become the coach you are? And then looking back at it, what's something that you know now as a coach that you wish you would have known as a player? Yeah, so um, I think playing, like, you you can see it. Like, I can see what's happening with my dudes during the game. And, like, I can see, like, a player to ahead of what they're about to do, <laughs> what they're about to do or what they're thinking that they want to do. Um, you also can can feel like when they're going through something. You know, like when something's not right, you know it. Like you don't have to, like I don't have to watch film. I don't have to, I can see them walking through the hall and like, you know, hey man, what's up? Like, come talk to me. What's going on? You know, you're not going to make every shot. It's part of the game. It just happens. You know, don't get down. We can't get down. I had a guy, we have a young man on our team. He's fantastic. Uh, I mean, he's been with us for years. He, probably two games ago, he was struggling. Like somebody was, they were running two people at him. Like, it was ridiculous. And I saw him. Like, he was swinging the ball. Like, he, was, he wasn't he was in attack mode. Like, he wasn't the guy that I knew that we grew up with or that has grown up in our program. So I pulled him when he was shooting free throws. I'm like, hey, man, like, I know. I, I know they're not letting you do what you want to do. Like, I get it. But you can't, like, shut down. Like, we got to play. We got to keep doing. Like, you got to figure out something else now. Um so I think, you know, playing, you learn that, you can resonate with your guys. Uh, you know how their bodies feel after they've lifted, you know, we on the fifth day of lifting, and, you know, they've been working out and practicing at the same time on Fridays. You kind of know what they're going through and how they feel. Um, so I will say that that has helped a lot. It's also helped in film sessions because you can, you know, you can stop it like, hey, dude, like, what's up? <laughs> what's you doing? You know? For sure. Um, so that kind of stuff, I would say, uh, what would I now, as I, if I was a player, what would I know? So I would say, man, I will say, I think the guys now are very smart at taking advantage of their opportunities, right? Like taking, they, they like have a lot of opportunities and they take advantage of them. Like they know when their opportunities are, right? Like I, you never knew, like for us, you didn't, I didn't know. You just knew that you were going to play. Like you didn't know who was who. You didn't know, like there wasn't game film circulating like that. Like at, at Word of God, like Coach Washington, he was good as gold. My high school teammate says, but like Coach was a firm believer of like, we're better than you, so we're going to go beat you. Like that's, that's what we're going to do. Like we're, we're better than you guys. We're going to do what we do. And we're going to roll the ball out and we're going to go beat you in what we do. Sometimes it worked like four or five times during the season. It didn't, you know, um, but that was the nature of the business. I think 
you know, back then, you know, knowing how to prepare for games, knowing how to prepare for teams, uh, like taking advantage of the opportunity as opposed to like just going out and playing. Like, let's just go play. And then we would make adjustments midway to game. You know, first quarter, okay, this kid can really shoot it. We got to do something different, you know. Yep. Um, but I think it helped with IQ, though. Like, we we saw that as players. So you'd be out there playing, and you're like, hey, man, he can't go left. Like, let's push him <laughs> left all game, you know. <laughs> you're right. Uh, so, yeah. So, and then now, since you're on the coach, you're AD, what's sort of your motto, your mission statement that you live by? on the, uh, your daily life routine and on the coaching side? Yeah. So uh, as a daily life, like, you know, just a routine, I simply, honestly, like, I just want to be the best husband, father, and man I can be. So like, that's, that's it. So every day I'm just waking, I take my boys in, in the morning. So we wake up and get ready for school. That's always an adventure. Somebody's crying and somebody's doing something else. Sometimes they're ready. Sometimes they're not. Um, and then, you know, like making sure if you oh, got lead, like my wife has been doing it for nine years. We got twins. So we got twin boys. So she's we've had the boys in the middle of the season. I literally got out of a game, came home, packed the bags, went to the hospital. And we had twin boys about five years ago. So that was a, that's been a journey in its own self. Uh, so making sure she's good. because She's been a saint, like <laughs> keeping up with everything during the seasons. Um, and then, you know, like at AD, like as a school in a whole, uh, being what my high school coach was, so being a role model, like for all of our coaches, right? All of our coaches, all of our players, always having time for them, uh, never, you know, being too busy. Like, I don't, I don't believe in, like, you can never be too busy to help someone, right? They need something and they need help. Like, I'm, I'm the type of guy, I'll give you the shirt off my back, you know, like, so if you need something, I don't care what I'm doing, we're going to stop, we'll talk about it, I'll be there for you. Um, so I think that's that's kind of my life in the AD model uh, from a coaching perspective. Like we we want to help dudes who love the game. So like if you love the game, we're going to help you. We don't need anything from you. I have a A1 fantastic staff and always have like, you know, we're always close. Those guys are always like they're all like super, super accomplished in their lives. They're all great role models for our kids. So, like, if we can help somebody, we're going to help them, no matter what anybody has said about them, no matter what how anyone else feels about them. Like, we're going to help you. We're going to love you. And then after loving you, like, or while we're loving you, we're going to help you as well. We'll hold you accountable. We're going to help you. For sure. You got you to hold everyone accountable. There you go. So, there you go. How would you describe your coaching style? Man, so – um, I guess my players would probably say something a little different, but I would say um, we are, I am very direct with our guys. So I don't believe in not telling the truth. So I'm going to tell them the truth wholeheartedly. And then we're going to show them the truth on film, <laughs> but I tell them the truth. Uh, yeah. I tell them the truth. I am very supportive of what they, what they want to do. And I would like to think I'm fair. So like, if you earn it, you're going to get it. Like no matter what grade you're in, no matter like, you know, who your parents are, no matter where you came from, none of that means anything to us. So when you come in here, everybody's the same, you know, we treat everyone the same. Uh, we believe in that. And we believe in getting guys, you know, hopefully helping guys learn how to compete because they're going to have to do it all throughout their lives. You know, we always tell them like, man, you're going to get married one day. You know, do you like you want the wife that nobody wants? <laughs> that what you want? Or you want to compete a little bit? Like, what you gonna do? <laughs> you know? So uh, we 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 kind of make it translate to life uh, from basketball. I will also say that we are very very from a philosophy standpoint. We're defensive. Like, we everything's gonna be built around our defense, right? So we're very defensive oriented. I think we watched film yesterday. We watched about 25 clips and probably 20 of them were defensive <laughs> clips. Um, so that's what we're going to do defensively. Um, and we're going to be, you know, we like to have our guys be tough. So we love tough guys. For sure. For sure. Got to be, got to be tough. The toughest yeah. team, that's the rules, man. We love uh, tough dudes. Yep. What is the best team that you've ever coached? Oh, boy. Um, okay. Okay. Mm. 
So team, I guess, as a whole, I would say, Tyler, boy, we're going to get in trouble for this one, I'm sure. Um, as a whole, let me think. I'm sure my phone will be buzzing. I will say it was 17, 18, um, the team, because they have been around for so long. So we had, uh, we had one new guy that year, two new guys that year. Everyone else had been around two, three, four years. Uh, I mean, we had watched them grow up. Uh, they were loyal. Some of them had been around five years. They, they were loyal. They came with us through a school change. Um, and we were good. We went to the final four. We lost to a really good Trinity team. Um, they were loaded that year. I, mean, I think he does a fantastic job with his dudes. Like they, they always bring the juice, right? So like they do, they do a great job. Yeah. And they're tough. So we, we lost in a really good game with them. Um, but I was, that was a really good team that we had. And I've had some good ones, had some good players, had fun, but talent for talent, they were good. Yeah. And obviously as coaches, um, you know, you always have that one moment where you'd like to maybe do over a certain game or a certain situation. What would you say is kind of like your do over moment? Yeah, man. So I was at Garinger High School. I'll never forget it. So I was at Garinger High School and we were playing. We had like went on this incredible run. So it was my first year. Like it wasn't really good before us. And, and like, I mean, we didn't do anything different. We just came in and like we had older guys. So we had guys that were seniors. We had one freshman. Uh, he was going to be special. And, and like, we, we played – we made it to the playoffs. They hadn't been to the playoffs in years and ages. We won the first-round game. Like, we came to school the next day. Them dudes were, like, on top of the world. Uh, we had some college signees on that team. And we played Olympic the night for the next playoff game, or maybe two games later. We played Olympic. And uh, – Man, we we went in and we had the like perfect game plan. I thought I thought we had like the amazing game plan, and uh, they had a kid that they brought off the bench that I don't think I had ever seen before. And like I don't know if he had played to this day. I don't know if he played or he he didn't play at all. But he came off the bench and we couldn't account for him. And they opened the game up and they beat us. And I've always felt like since that day that like. I didn't do my kids justice. Like we, we, we prepared for five dudes, six maybe, but we didn't prepare for that seventh guy and that seventh guy hurt us. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if it was just his night or like, you know, he was the man, you know, but I, he hurt us and uh, we lost and our season ended and it was, it hurt to see. We had like, we had a couple, we had a young man went to Carolina that year. Like he was, we were, we were pretty strong. He played football, but, uh um, Man, that one that one stings a little bit. I still watch that game film. <laughs> Coach, you got you got to turn that game film off, man. You got to put that man, in the past. I can't I can't get over it. I can't get over it. He came <laughs> off the bench, and like uh, you can see, I kind of look around at my assistants like, <laughs> like who is this right here? Like who is this dude right here? <laughs> and uh, man, he went to work. He went to work. So uh, <laughs> I never forget that. I never forget that day. I think because of that, I've become like a little like probably. OD, as the kids say, on preparing for games and making sure they know, like, who got, like, who's who, right? Yeah. Like, you got to know who this guy is. You got to know what he can do. And it all stems from that game, I think, so. For sure. You, you learn, learning experience, man. There's, there's it is. I've had many of those, man. I've had many of those. Hey, you, 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 uh, you grow from those. That's what makes you better. That's right. That's right. Uh, my, la my last question to you, Coach. Uh, can, I know you have a great team this year. Can you just give us a little rundown of some of your players, some of the – what's kind of unique about the season already that you already had games and now going in, playing with masks and the whole yeah. situation for the rest of the year? Yeah, man. So our season, our, our kids, they have been um, – they have been resilient, right? Um, we have a good, good group of guys. So we have dudes that have been here. So, like, LJ Johnson's been here four years. Right, like he's been here since eighth grade, going into the ninth grade. Uh, his family's been fantastic. Like he's 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 great. Um, we have Charlie Hester. Charlie's been here for two years. Quentin Sherman. Charlie's six four wing. Um, I mean, he's a he's a shooter. He's an athlete. Sneaky. He'll dunk on you. You're not expecting it, uh, but it'll happen. 
uh, he works. So like when I get to school in an hour, he's probably going to be in the gym or he's probably going to be texting, asking to get in the gym uh, <laughs> during his study hall or during, you know, after school, or can I stay until nine, 10 o'clock at night so he can stay in the gym. We kick him out every night. Um, and we got uh, big boy. We got Quinn Sherman and AD. We call him AD, Adriel De La Rosa. So uh, those dudes are like, the best guys that you can find. Quentin, 6'10", about 230, AD, 6'8", maybe about 210, 215, high motor. Um, and those dudes, like, it's so rewarding to have them because, I mean, you know, like, I know bigs develop late, right? So, like, when you – but when they start developing, like, you see it happening. Like, yeah. you see it. The other night, Quentin had 12 and 10 and about two or three dunks, and I think he missed one shot. And we have been – we were in film and – like we've been riding him all year long. Like, hey, man, can you do something? Can you give us something? You know, we've been tough on him, but he's a tough kid. Uh, he can handle it. And, you know, he probably didn't like me. I know he didn't like me for several practices. Uh, but he's kept chopping wood, right? Like, he's chopping wood every day. He's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. Um, and, and we love him. So, so him, AD's motor is incredibly high. Um, and, and they're just getting better every day. So, like, every day they're getting better. AD had a game last year, 44 and 16. Uh, he was the man. He's the man last year. Uh, but they're just, you know, they're good kids. Um, we have uh, Mr. Marcus Willis. He came to us this year. And Marcus was, uh, I always joke and say he's the brother-in-law of a former player. So, he, uh, Josh Massey, the window went uh, Western Carolina. Josh recommended. He called me one day. And Josh is like, you got to know him. He's got like this huge personality. He's a great dude. So he called me, coach, man, I got somebody, I got a point guard. He wants to come, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, you know, the process he's got to go through at the school and blah, blah, blah. So I'm thinking like, oh, Josh, like, who is this guy? And I found out, like, I guess he knows Josh's sister or something like that. So like, um, <laughs> their families are really close, I think. So either way, he comes in and he goes through the stuff at school and he gets in and like, we see him the first day and Marcus is, you know, 5'10", you know, tough, like built like a little tank. So we're like, okay, like, what can he do? I mean, he climbed up and he probably jumped four feet in the high in the air and dunked the basketball. We're like, Hey, Marcus, good to see you, brother. How you doing? <laughs> Come on in here. Let's talk a little bit. <laughs> nah, but Marcus has been, and then we saw like, we watched game film and he's been like exactly what you could imagine on the tape like he's been that and more uh for us marcus is great uh yes sir no sir kid it doesn't matter if you get on him it doesn't matter if you run him like he's not he's yes sir did you do it no sir i didn't do it I, i'm sorry <laughs> uh, so we have those two dudes we have mr lance gill so lance is a sophomore uh, lance came to us lance is is like silky smooth like he's not you can't rattle him you can't speed him up um, he can do a little bit of everything on the floor. He can dribble pass and shoot it. He's starting to get some calls. Um, Atlanta will be really good, too. He's really steady, super smart kid. Um, and it resonates on the floor. Uh, then we have from Lance, we go to Xavier Ivy. He's new as well. He came from Parkwood. And, you know, I always it's a blessing whenever, you know, we have dudes that come. Like, nobody knew him when he showed up, like, he showed first conversation. He was like, man, I just want to be a part of like the culture. Like, I just want to be a part of the team. Like, hey, Zay, like, we'll take you. Like, welcome. Come on in, brother. Like, we need these guys. Like, and he's been nothing short of amazing. Um, he's embraced our team. He's embraced the culture. He's he's never fought it. Like, I think he was the man at his last spot. He's never like fought it, you know. Like he's come in, he's done everything we've asked for him to do. He's never made an excuse. Um you know, he's been great. Uh, he's been front row in film with notepads. Like, he's fantastic. Um, we got Jaden Quick. Jaden Quick has come over. Uh, he, this is his second year as well. Uh, Jaden is our guy. He is our tough dude at the point guard position. Uh, he's a little quiet assassin. I think dudes found out this year that you can't talk junk to him. Uh, he's tough as nails as they come. Uh, his parents are fantastic, and he's a great kid. Um Jaden's fast. Jaden's tough. We same thing as Marcus. We can get on him. I always tell him like point guard is the best position to play, but it's also the toughest. Like we're gonna be on you because it's your job to make sure the engine goes right. You're the coach on the floor. 
that's it, man. We had that conversation yesterday. Um, but yeah, man. So Jaden's there and he's good. And then we got like a uh, early Christmas gift or something. I, I don't know, but he was, he knew Marcus. So like our guys know each other. And thankfully <laughs> that's, that's a great thing. So he knew Marcus and uh, his name is Xavier McKelvey. So Zay is, um, Zay's pretty special. So he'll be, he'll be, he's a junior. Uh, he's got two years and he's going to be incredibly special. He comes from a great background. Dad played, um, basketball family he just loves the game so he reminds me of like the kids that like I grew up with in my neighborhood like they just love basketball so like they don't need he doesn't need you know nice floors and gym. like when you go talk to him I remember when I first talked to him I said hey man like tell me why you're here like tell me why you play same thing like you just said tell me tell me like why we here what's up he said tell me about yourself his his only words were, I just love the hoop <laughs> that was it he was like I just want to hoop like I, I just love to play uh and like so I'm like okay so who do you work out with like who do you who do you train with all the kids that got trainers and all this stuff he was like nah like I walk to the court <laughs> I go to the court and I just play all day and then I come home <laughs> he's like what you know but he's special man he can do it all he can shoot it it's tough he can get downhill he can finish great body control he's incredibly athletic super smart um, quiet dude, but when he talks, like he's got something to say, right? So um, he's quiet around us anyway. I think he's, uh, I think with his teammates, you know, it's a different story. You know how that goes, you know, catch him dancing or something crazy. You know, they're doing everybody busting out laughing. So you thought he was quiet and uh, he just puts on a good front in front of us. <laughs> but they, uh, but our guys are like really good. I think the last dude we got, we got a baby, uh, Mr. Bryson Copley. So he's a freshman. And uh, he's everything that you can imagine a freshman to be. Uh, he is that. He is. Uh, you, you, he. He's a freshman. He's a freshman, and and but he's really good. He's six five. He's got an excellent body. He wants to be really, really good, and he will be. He's tough. Like when I say tough, he's incredibly tough. He's. Uh, he's. When practice becomes. I always say when we have the jump, the entrance practice, our freshman has bought the jump to practice. <laughs> he holds guys accountable and he has, he does a great job with direct communication. So like, it's not like, come on guys, we need to do this. Uh -uh. It's like, come on, Josh, what you doing over here? Why aren't you doing anything right in there? He's good. He's good at that. Um, every day he's in the gym, he's putting in extra hours. He's working on his stuff, uh, on his craft, which, you know, goes a long way as a freshman having four years to just sit and develop. Um, he's he's going to be good. He's going to be really good. That's awesome. I know you got a, you have a great team. Um, obviously, great coaching staff, great coach. Yeah. Um, so. You're in an um, awesome situation there at United Faith. Um, you do it. Yeah. You do a You do a tremendous job. I know. I know you're crazy busy now with the um, AD and all the coaching. But I appreciate you coming on the show, Coach. It means a lot, and I wish you nothing but the best for the rest of the season. No problem, Tyler. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thanks for coming on. All right. Have a good one.